Hi, this is question 7 from the AQA Mechanics 3 June 2013 exam paper. From an aircraft A, a helicopter H is observed 20 kilometers away on a bearing of 120 degrees. The helicopter H is traveling horizontally with a speed of 240 kilometers per hour on a bearing of 340 degrees. The aircraft A is travelling with constant speed VA kilometers per hour in a straight line and at the same altitude at H. For part A, we're being told that the velocity of the aircraft VA is equal to 200 kilometers per hour. So for the first part, we need to find a bearing to one decimal place on which A could travel in order to intercept H. So. Um, what we want to do is we want to make H our observer and what we're going to say is that the velocity of A relative to our observer H and we know that's going to be equal to the velocity of A take away the velocity of H. Okay so H is our observer so everything that we've got going on is going to go on over here at A being observed by H. So, um, we know the velocity of H is 240 kilometers per hour um, on a bearing of 340 degrees. So I'm going to take that so that's going to be our velocity of H and I'm going to draw this over here whoops, at A. Okay but because we want the negative of the velocity of h here, I'm going to draw it down this end. Okay, so this is from a, we're going to go in the negative direction of the velocity of h. And I'll just label that up. This is our velocity of h, which is 240 kilometers per hour. Okay, um, and we're told that the velocity of A is 200 kilometers per hour, so I'm going to add on the velocity of A to the velocity of H. So the velocity of A is going to go in, um, well, it needs to go towards this line here because 2H. A needs to be appear A needs to appear to come directly towards it. Okay, so our our velocity of A relative to H needs to be going in this direction towards H. It needs to appear that it's coming towards it. And that's why I've had to draw my velocity of A in this direction here. So this is the velocity of A relative to H. And this here is going to be my velocity of A, which is 200. Okay, so um, so I now know this length and this length, or this velocity and this velocity, I should say. Um, I'm now going to try and work out... Um, I've got a north line here. We want to try and work out some of our angles. So I've got a north line here. And I'll put a north line in here as well. Oops. Okay, let's see if we can label in some of our angles here. So we know that this has a bearing of 340 degrees. So that means this angle here is 340. So this angle here is 20. So I can label that in there, that's going to be 20 degrees. Okay, and we know this is on a bearing of 120 degrees. So this angle here is 120 degrees. And because that's 20, this whole angle here needs to be 160 because these add up to 180. So that means this part of the angle is going to be 40 degrees. Okay, so that's 120 and that's 40, that means 160, and these two add up to 180, so that works. So I now know this angle here is 40 degrees, 
I'm going to call this angle here alpha. Okay, so I want to work out alpha so I can then work out this angle here, which I'm going to call theta. And theta is actually going to tell me the direction of VA because this here is going to be the bearing from the north for the velocity of A. So let's work out alpha first of all, and then we can use that information to work out theta. So sine, so using the sine rule, I've got sine alpha divided by 240 is going to be equal to sine 40 over 200. Okay, so I can work out um, that sine alpha is going to be equal to 240 sine 40 over 200 and alpha is going to be equal to, let's use my calculator, so just going to make sure I'm in degree mode here. So we've got two 240 sine 40 divided by 200 and then alpha is going to be equal to 50.5 degrees so let's go with 50 Okay, so alpha is going to be 50.5 degrees. Um, I know that's 40 and I know that's 20. And all of these angles have to add up to 180. So I've got plus 40 plus 20. If I do 180, take away that, I get 69.5 degrees. So theta is going to be equal to 69.5 degrees. Okay, so my bearing here is going to be 0, 7, sorry, to one decimal place is going to be 0, 069.5 degrees. Okay, part two says find the time in minutes that it would take A to intercept H on this bearing. So the first thing I need to do here is I need to work out what the velocity of A relative to H is. Once I know that, I know the distance from A to H is 20 kilometers. So I should be able to work out how long that journey would take. Right, so this angle here now is um, going to be theta plus 20, so which is 89.5 degrees. So I've got uh, part two here. So the velocity of A relative to H divided by the sine of 69.5 plus 20, so that's 89.5 degrees is going to be equal to uh, and we we'll use this one here 200 over sine 40 okay so that means I've got if I add 20 to this So 200 times the sine of this angle gives us that and then we want to divide that by sine 40 and that tells me the velocity of A relative to H is going to be 311.1 so the velocity of A relative to H 
is going to be equal to 311.1 kilometers per hour. Okay, so to travel 20 kilometers at 311.1 kilometers per hour, I need to do, to work out the time, I need to do 20 divided by 311.1. I do 20 divided by the answer and that gives me 0 0.0643 okay so to convert that in minutes so that's going to be hours I need to times that by 60 and that gives me 3.86 minutes. Okay, now before I move on to part B, I'm just gonna tidy up some of my work here. Okay, in part B it says get that given that the velocity of A is 150 kilometers per hour, so before it was 200, now it's only 150, we want to find the bearing on which A should travel in order to approach H as closely as possible. So I've started our diagram over here again. So we've got, um, we've got A and H over here, 20 kilometers per apart, and on a bearing of 120 degrees and our velocity of h is going to remain unchanged so um, if i draw another one of these okay um, and that's going to be my velocity of h bring that over here and then we're going to draw that in the negative direction now remember h is going to be our observer again so we know the velocity of a relative to the h is going to be equal to the velocity of a take away the velocity of h so that's going to be my negative of velocity of h which is still going to be like before 240 kilometers per hour Okay, now this time, the problem that we've got is, well, it's not really a problem, but the scenario that we've got is that rather than having a velocity of 200 kilometers per hour, A has a velocity of 150 kilometers per hour. So it's not going to be as long as this. And actually, the issue is, is that it's not actually going to be, whoops, actually going to be long enough for us to reach this line and therefore intercept the helicopter. So what we're looking for is we're looking for it to approach our helicopter as closely as possible. So we want the path that it takes to be as close to H as possible. So the way that this works is I want to actually draw a circle here. And what we're saying is that this has a radius of 150 kilometers per hour, this circle does. And what and this, um, our velocity of A, it needs to be going towards the circumference of this circle somewhere but we want to place it in the place that when I draw my resultant vector in um, or my relative velocity vector in it's going to be approaching H as close as possible so what we actually want to happen is we want our relative velocity vector Um, and I'm just going to draw that in orange. We want that vector to be a tangent to this circle because that's going to make it approach H as close as possible. So we want it to be a tangent to this circle. 
So, and if it's a tangent to this circle, that means that that vector there, the velocity of a, is going to be at right angles to the velocity of a um, relative to h. So let's just label that in. So that's going to be a right angle there. That's my velocity of a, which is going to be 150 kilometers per hour this time. And this orange one here is going to be my velocity of a relative to h. It's going to be going in that direction there. Okay, and I'll pop it over there. Okay, and then if that's going in that direction, that means that it's going to go along this path over here. Um, and I'll just do that in green over here. Okay, so this is the path that it's going to take. And our shortest distance is going to be here. That's going to be our shortest distance there when we're at right angles to that path. Okay, so, um, but for this question, all we need to do is find the bearing on which A should travel in order to approach H as close as possible. So we just need to know the bearing that um, that A should travel on. Okay, so we're looking for the bearing that A is going to travel on. Right. So what we've got here is we've actually got a right angle triangle. This is going to have a length of 150, um, and this is going to have a length of 240. So this angle here, um, if we call this angle here, uh, and we'll call it gamma, and we can say that the the cosine of gamma is going to be equal to my adjacent divided by my hypotenuse, which in this case is going to be 150 divided by 240, in which case the angle gamma is going to be equal to the inverse cos of 150 divided by 240. And that's going to be 51.3 degrees. Fifty-one point three degrees. So that's that angle there, fifty-one point three degrees. Um, but I want to know the bearing. What the bearing's going to be? So if I mark in my north line here, okay, that's my north line. I know this angle here is going to be. 20 degrees like it was before that's going to be 20 degrees so my bearing here because gamma is 51.3 I need to do 51.3 take away 20 so my bearing is going to be equal to 51.3 take away 20 which is going to give me 0, 031.3 degrees. So that's the um, bearing on which A should travel in order to approach H as closely as possible. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you next time.